Hello, Samadan here. Welcome to Pre-Patch. A whole lot of things have changed, yet strangely things are also the same. In this video I'm going to talk through what's been working for me to make gold in Pre-Patch and offer some suggestions as to how you too can make some gold. First, I feel we need to address the Brutosaur in the room, the relic of the past. I spent a great deal of time and gold speculating on this as it went through many, many changes on the PTR. What we actually ended up with is a far cry from what it could have been, and I'm sad it turned out the way it did. It's such a shame, I really wanted to make things that would be useful to other players, for more than just their transmog appearances. But sadly the relic of the past does nothing to elevate them from beyond mere pretty clothes. Right now, Uncanny Gear is far better for a fresh level 50 than any of the other old expansion gear. It makes much more sense to carry on making that rather than any of the older gear. The relic system itself is not entirely useless, it's still possible to put a relic one on some items to reduce the vendor costs and listing fees, and there may well be some nice items for twink brackets and filling gaps in heirlooms. I wouldn't completely rule it out, but the pickings are extremely slim from what they could have been. The whole vendor shuffle thing has been knocked right on the head, so forget about that. It was certainly interesting whilst it lasted, and lots of fun playing the material markets while we all speculated. I'm glad the big bugs were addressed because they would have really affected the whole economy and it's not a fun way to make gold, but I was hoping for a couple of shuffles to give variety to players and spice up the markets. Now I find myself in a situation many of you will be in too, and that's a huge stockpile of old mats. Don't worry, all is not lost. My suggestion is to keep hold of it for now until the prices stabilise and we can start putting it back on the market. In the meantime, there's plenty of old world stuff to make and start using up that stock. I'm talking about things like netherweave bags, black mageweave gear, things that will trickle through in sales over time. The truth is, now is a great time to be making gold. Lots of players are returning to see what the new levelling system is like, and so many alts means lots of new gear. Another thing is many players are looking to complete collections and do all the things they didn't have time for while we wait for Shadowlands, so there's an incredible amount of variety out there in terms of player activity and lots of activity means lots of markets, and this is where we can make some gold. Let's talk all about the things we can do right now to make gold, and I'll go through those that have been working for me. First up, bags. Lots of bags. Not just the big ones either. I make netherweave, frostweave, hexweave and deep sea bags. They all sell really well right now. People are making alts, and alts need bags. It's surprising what ones sell, and the price does not always make sense. I've sold frostweed bags for 280 gold and deep sea bags for 190 gold on the same day. Then there's the specialist ones like Hydral Expedition Bag and Burnished Mining Bag, don't forget those. Just make bags, all the bags, and see which ones sell on your server. Now I've not been doing the embroidered deep sea bags because I've not really been heavy into Mythic Dungeons so I don't have the Hydra Core that you need for that. But if you do and you have access to that, then that would be a really good seller right now as well. Now because of the whole relic of what's the point thing, Uncanny Gear has seen a resurgence of late. It's ideal stock cap gear for a fresh level 50. What it does is help boost the player's overall item level so that when they do their world quests they get better rewards and can really upgrade their gear. It fills a gap, it takes the player from the rough stuff they collected on their leveling journey and into the next phase of gearing up. Right now I don't worry too much about the variation. I just post anywhere from 2 to 4 of each slot and ignore item variations. The only exception to this is the blacksmithing weapons. I make more of those and price them according to the variation. Food and potions. Now this one surprised me a little. I wasn't expecting food and potions to sell so well right now, but I guess with all the changes to classes and levels and general changes in difficulty, players still need buffs and an edge when it comes to content. Now I'm not a high-end player, I'll be the first to admit that. If you've seen me heal during a Mythic Plus 10 you'll understand. So when it comes to food and potions, if the player keeps buying then I'll keep making them to sell. The ones that sell pretty consistently for me are kebab, biltong, baked potato, that kind of thing, the personal food mainly. I've not bothered with the feasts. As for potions, I go for the whole range of BFA ones, flasks and potions are doing well. I make them every time I get a Silas Brock. SILAS! Profits on potions can be very tight, so make sure you get your herbs at a good price. They seem to fluctuate quite a bit on my server, 
the best bet is to try and catch a bargain when you can. Enchants for levelling. Another great seller right now through P-Patch is enchants of all kinds. Players like to buff up their characters on the levelling journey and then do the same once at max level. There is a lot of opportunity here to feed enchants of all sorts of levels. The ones that do particularly well are Elemental Force, Mark of the Hidden Satyr, Force Multiplier, Glorious Stats and Versatile Navigation. Enchants are really cheap to list, so it's easy to experiment and put a load of different ones on. Watch out for the prices of materials feeding into this too. Chaos Crystals are very much in demand for those Legion Neck enchants, so keep an eye out for Nether Shard missions on your order hall. Also, watch out for things like Righteous Orbs for the Crusader enchant. Veiled Crystals are also in demand, so see what prices you can get for those. The whole Bracer Super Shuffle thing I've done previous videos on has changed quite a bit with Pre-Patch. I'll do a new video on that soon that goes through the details of what new materials we get and how to price those. But right now, see if you can get some good prices on the auction house. There are a few other things I've seen a rise in sales since Pre-Patch, and those feed into specific achievements, like the Lucid Mount and the Waste of Time. So if you're a tailor, then make sure you're selling Shadow Weave Masks and the four different items you need for the Waste of Time. That's the Death Silk Shoulders, the Wind Wool Hood, Frost Woven Leggings, and Nether Weave Tunic. And then there are all the materials that feed into those, especially Shadow Silk. That can spike in price quite a bit, and is pretty fun to farm as well. So during this time of pre-patch, many are looking for recipes to complete their collection. I'm one of them, and I've been buying all sorts on the auction house, simply because it saves me a lot of time. This would be a good opportunity to head out and pick up those limited supply recipes that you find dotted around the world, and sell them on the auction house. Also, the BOE ones that drop from dungeons can be handy if you get lucky whilst running those. There really is a lot to do to make gold right now. Markets are much more active, and even if you're not into professions themselves, you can always go out and collect the materials needed instead and sell those on the auction house. Look to see what your fellow players are doing and see what you can provide to help them, and then make some gold in the process. I'm sure I've only scratched the surface here of what's making gold right now. I hear good things from the glyph markets, goblin gliders and mount equipment to name but a few. I'd be interested to hear what's been selling for you too. Maybe we can get a whole list going in the comments. So I hope that gave you some ideas and you found that useful. Until next time, happy gold making and I'll see you very soon.